Okay. Well, an official good morning to everybody here and everybody at home. Uh, I do miss you guys. I really do. And uh, I feel like I'm back home when I'm back here. So, uh, so yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So, uh, as far as announcements go, annual conference is October 31st. So, two weeks ago when I announced the charge conference, I don't think I knew what time it was, but it is at 7 o'clock. It'll be at Fort Grove on November 4th. Today, we have a board meeting at 1 o'clock which the reason for the time gives me time to go to Fort Grove, do the service there, and get back down here. So, uh, and we're primarily going to talk about uh, charge conference. Harry and I talked last night, and uh, we really don't have much other stuff to talk about. Okay, anything else? Any other announcements for the good of the church or the community? No, well, it's really great to see Marvin Wheeler back. Marvin has had some health issues, but... Uh, uh, Thank you doing great, Auntie Marvin. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Marvin, for being here. And Marvin has followed us faithfully online uh, every week, and uh, he, he follows the Facebook page. He's usually the first one to respond to anything I post on the Facebook page. Uh, so, uh, so it's always good to see your name there, but it's better to see you here, brother. Better to see you here. Fundraiser netted us over twenty four hundred dollars. Um, so which, what a Phil what a blessing, did. huh? Which Phil Pear did. Which Phil Pear did. Thank you very much. Um, prayers. Uh, I have Ben and Betty and Velma Katz and uh, and Robert and his family. So um, are there others we can lift up in prayer today? My niece asked me to put somebody on the prayer list. And I really don't know their name, but God would know who it is. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's unspoken. There you go. Except God will know who it is. Mm -hmm. God knows all about it. Okay, also uh, at Mount Pleasant, uh, J.W. Allen had a heart procedure. Uh, and Susan, Jesse, and Larry Harrell have, uh, Jesse and Larry had bypass surgery. And Susan is supposed to have a valve replaced. Uh, so I think you guys probably know some of them as well. So I wanted to let you know that. Uh, any others we can lift up in prayer? Uh, the joy we lifted up about the Brunswick stew is uh, is also you know just an incredible joy. So we want to continue to remember that we are involved too with uh, Pam. Yeah. Uh, Pam is. I know she's having a tough time because right now I think she's more or less. Saying to herself a lot and all that's good or bad, but uh, there's no way nobody can tell how what her feelings are and how, how she feels. So we have to let her keep her distance and do what she thinks is best. So we don't know what else to do really right now. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just keep praying. Keep praying. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up to you this morning Ben and Betty and Velma, Robert and his family, Lord, please be with them and help them, guide them in the way that they need to be guided. Lord, we lift up Pam's, Pam and her family as they continue to mourn the loss of, of Karen. And the unspoken prayer, the prayer is spoken, but we don't know the name, Lord, but you do. Denise, whatever that may be for, Lord, you know the needs of what needs to be provided. And you know our needs too, Lord, that are unspoken. And, and sometimes we don't even realize it, Lord, 
that we have a need. Help us. Help us, please. And help our con country to find unity. Help us, please, to find unity with each other. And the love that you so unconditionally provide. Join me now in the prayer Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our first hymn is number 174. His name is wonderful. Remember, it's okay to hum, and it's okay to say the word softly. singing Johnny got his job back <laughs> and, and a lot of trials and tribulations uh, that he went through but uh, but he had faith and uh, he stayed with it and everything worked out just like it was supposed to right yep got we, another week though before I go no, back. another week before you go back but you're going back yeah yes so uh yes and uh now, we do wish the time frame had been short, uh, but it was not, and <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Uh, uh, but however, it is what it is, and you got your job back, so amen, and praise God for that. Our scriptures today come from Galatians chapter 6, starting at verse 1, and John chapter 8, starting at verse 1. So Galatians, uh, this section is, is entitled, We Harvest what we plant. Dear brothers and sisters, Paul says, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens and in this way obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Uh, the plainness of his words sometimes uh, <laughs> are funny. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else. For we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death 
from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At, the, at just the right time, we will reap a harvest. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing, Johnny, if we don't give up. Amen? Amen. How appropriate. Uh, therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. And our reading from John, chapter 8, starting at verse 1, is the story of the woman caught in adultery. Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning, he was back again at the temple, and soon a crowd gathered, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him, but Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. And they kept demanding an answer, so he stood up and he said, All right. But let the one, let the one of you who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go now and sin no more. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is number 171, the one I've been walking around singing all morning since I've been here. There's something about that name.
I just want to have the head on back. I know. <laughs> I know, Johnny. <laughs> I know, brother. Oh, just, mm, 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 mm. It gets me weepy when I really think about it. We were telling Sean last night that Van and I heard John Beverly Shea. He was in his 90s now. I'm almost older than I am. <laughs> sang that song last night. Yeah. Oh. Uh. Uh, you know, uh, I think I shared this with you guys some time ago, but uh, the folks online didn't hear it because we weren't doing online then. But uh, uh, Joe, your former pastor, Joe Simmons, and Brian, her husband, and myself, and Mary Dasman, the pastor at uh, uh, Carson United Methodist, we were the spiritual directors on an Emmaus walk. And Joe was the lead spiritual director. And something she did during the walk was every time she said Jesus' name, she said it three times. She would say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it got more and more and more powerful as the four days of the Emmaus walk went. There's just something about that name. And uh, what, a, what a gift. What a gift. All given to all of us just because God loves us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that you love us so much. Help us to not take that love for granted. To not take it for granted. Lord, we thank you for the guidance of your scriptures and, and I thank you for the guidance of this message that you planted you planted in my mind a week ago today. And I pray, Lord, that the meditations of my heart and the words of my lips be yours and yours alone. And I pray your blessings upon this message that it may be heard and put to good use. Amen. Amen. So do you want to be happy? Do you want to be happy? Do you want to be at peace? You know, that's like a different level of happiness, isn't it? You know, uh, the contentment of being at peace with yourself and with others. Something about being at peace with ourselves kind of makes us at peace with others, doesn't it? Well, we do that through forgiveness. But to get to the forgiveness part, I want to talk a lot about judgment. And this is, you know, God kind of planted this message of, of judgment versus forgiveness and how that works together. So, you know, when we think about these two words, they are definitely different, especially from a God-loving perspective. However, in our daily lives, how do we use forgiveness and judgment? We certainly know what forgiveness is. When we've done wrong, we hope to be forgiven by the person we wronged. And when we have wronged others, or excuse me, when others have wronged us, it is our jobs as Christians to forgive them. Scriptures tell us that in order for us to be forgiven, we must forgive. I can tell you, the first time I heard that, I was like, oh no, I do not want to have to go there. I really do not want to have to go there. You see, forgiving others that had wronged me was something that I really wasn't willing to do and really felt like that I should not have to go there because, you see, I didn't wrong them, they wronged me. So why should I, they, they should be the ones forgiving, right? Not me. I mean, seriously, they were wrong and they should pay for it. But you see, lo and behold, that's where the judgment part comes in. And I mean, seriously, these people really had done something wrong to me. And why should I have to suffer because of their actions? But the truth of the matter is, many times, is that in these situations, the person that has wronged us, many times they do not realize they've done so. And the one truly suffering is not them, 
but me. And there are some people, there are some people, there's certain personality type that when they wrong somebody, which is something they do on a regular basis, honestly, and they do it on a regular basis, they might feel bad for a very short period of time, but within 24 hours, they're over it, and they have moved on to wronging someone else. And as I said, the one truly suffering was me. And in order to move on from the pain, I had to learn how to forgive them. And it wasn't easy. But I was taught this, this very handy tool, and I've, I've shared it before. It's worth sharing again. Uh, for persons that I had a resentment against, I needed to pray for them for 14 days. Now, when I first heard this, I need to pray for them for 14 days, I thought, I can't pray for that person. But I hadn't heard the whole story yet. See, the whole thing was I didn't just pray for them. I had to pray for God to bless them. And I'm like, oh, no, how can I do this? And I heard a story. Uh, a lady was sharing one day, and, and, and she said uh, she had been given this advice, and she had been praying for her boss. And her boss was apparently somebody that was very difficult to get along with, but she was told to pray for her boss, and she had prayed for her boss. And her boss got a promotion. So she went back to her friend, and she said, I have been praying for this woman. And she got a promotion. And her friend said, so with that promotion, is she still your boss? And she said, well, no. She said, there you go. The answer to your prayer. So with that, I got, well, there's, there's another side to this prayer thing and how it turns out. My job is to just do it. You see, being judgmental and exercising biblical judgment are two different things as well. God's people are given authority. God's people, us, us, are given authority to judge all things according to God's word. But the tricky part is, and, and where we, we go wrong sometimes, is we are called to do it as he would. This is the difficult part because we're representing God, not us. The role of Christ, the role of Christ up to the final judgment day, which is not yet come, is to save the world. And that's our role also, to do our part in saving the world. And this, and again, this is another place where we fall short. We are, given, we are given authority to judge sin, but not the person who commits it. There is a significant difference between the two, and we heard it in our Galatians reading. Matthew 18 gives us guidance. We had Matthew 18 about four or five weeks ago. And, and it gives us a guidance that when someone has, or we feel someone has sinned against us, that we are to go to that person and talk to them. And if it's not resolved in that conversation, we go back with a couple members of the church. And if it's not resolved then, then the church is to remove them from the church. But too often, people actually run others down verbally instead of taking this action. With the, without the intention of doing anything other than gossiping, which is sinful in and of itself. You see, our judgment, the judgment that we are allowed to have, is to be for restoration, not condemnation. God has sole responsibility for condemning others. That is God's responsibility only. You see, we're called to follow in Jesus' footsteps and find the good in others and help them find restoration. We are Jesus' representatives on the earth, and we are to share his love, his mercy, and his grace. And it doesn't mean overlooking or excusing sin either. 
doesn't mean that at all. And saying, oh, she's always been that way is not an excuse to accept someone's bad behavior. It's just an excuse to not deal with it. You see, our gospel lesson today, Jesus never denies the fact of the woman's sin. He never denies it. He just denies the hypocrites that are trying to carry out the punishment. You know, they were actually trying to get a twofer here. They were trying to punish her and trap him. But of course, we all know that every time they try to do that, Jesus always overcomes. And Jesus never condoned the sin the woman had created. As well, he never condemned the sinner. All too often, sinners within and without the church are condemned rather than restored through Bible-based judgment. The result is bitterness and resentment. Believers are wounded and rejected and non-believers are driven away by ruthless judgment. You see, it is ours, folks. It is ours, folks here, folks at home. It is ours to lovingly point out the truth and encourage others to come to Christ for forgiveness, restoration, and salvation. The base of, basement of chief. <laughs> Easy for you to say. The basis of judgment must always be, must always be the love of God. In all honesty, we are calling Jesus a liar when we withhold grace and mercy while forgetting our own sinfulness. As the Reverend Sarah Vanko so eloquently said it. We must always strive to see every person with a past forgiven, a beautiful present, and a future full of possibility and potential. You see, in doing so, in doing so, we find forgiveness for others. In my situation that I talked about, there's been multiple instances. I thought of one in particular uh, while I was putting this together. But that person that had wronged me in one situation and all the others, he didn't care. He did that to everybody. I was the one that was hurting. And somehow in that process of praying, praying for God to bless him, for those 14 days, God took away my hand. And my resentment. And condemnation of that person is in God's hands, not mine. You see, we find forgiveness for others when we go through this process. And in forgiveness, we find peace. In peace, we find love. And in love, we too are forgiven. And the light of the Holy Spirit that is within us will shine brightly when we look at ourselves in the mirror and when others see us. Amen? Amen, amen. And our closing hymn is This Little Light of Mine.
I was humming, wasn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Let us hear this benediction, please. Dear Heavenly Father, your love is so awesome. You know, we get confused sometimes about how to make it work in our lives, and, and, and we get thrown curveballs all the time. All the time we're thrown curveballs by different things. You know, sometimes family member, everybody, all these different things that come at us. You know, it's, it's the work of the dark one. It's the work of the devil. He, he's still active. He's, he's active in everybody's lives. He just tries to get in and, and keep us from finding the love and the peace and the joy that you want for us so desperately. And you provide it for us. It is there for the taking. And help us, help us to just bust through all the, all the negativity, all that stuff that gets in our way of, of being focused on you and having you in our lives and having you in our hearts. So that little light, that little light will shine brightly. Amen? Amen, amen. God bless you, folks. God bless you, God bless you. And I will see you at 1 o'clock. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Uh, um. God bless you at home, folks. Thank you for being with us.